Um, what do you know about the Opatas since since today? Or well, actually, I was really surprised that they even existed because even though I was teaching Arizona history all those years, I never really. I may have heard them once or twice, but I never really uh, focused in on the Opatas, and because there were others more, more, uh, more catchy. For example, the Apaches, the Pimas, the Papagos, the Mayos, the Yaquis, the Seris, the Tarahumaras. All these people were much more uh, in the limelight. They were up front, and I it never. I never really looked that much, or even heard that much about the Opatas until I started reading recently, like I say, after the age of 65, I started running into it. I wondered, who are these people? And then I began to come to the conclusion that where they lived and their customs and their, their, <coughs> their physical appearance, well, hey, it was my own people. They were describing my family. For example, my, my father would always tell me that even in Tin Town, in Bisbee, where, where he was born and grew up, uh, they would have um, uh, fariseos, they would call them, during Holy Week, and they would dress up in uh, very elaborate Indian costumes and dance. And I, I never really saw the kind. I always wondered what's the connection between that and the and Holy Week and the, the Passion of Christ and in a way there really isn't any it's just that they would celebrate those dances at that time of the year and I also noticed that living on the border here I would go to Mexicali and and you would see young and we're San Luis and but more to Mexicali where you have a lot of people from that part of Sonora they are either Mayos or Yaquis or Oropatas and they carry on these customs, but they don't think of themselves as doing, hey, we're doing an Indian custom. We're doing something uh, from anthropology or something from culture. They would just do it because they assume that everybody knows what they're doing and it's, it's automatic and it, it comes very natural to them. But I would see these, these customs that, that, that they would have that would be that I now understand are Opata customs that are performed in all the villages, for example, during Semana Santa. And traveling through Sonora and even into Sinaloa, I would see these young men uh, doing these traditional dances at that time of the year. And I don't think they even know why they're doing it or, or what the symbolism is, but they just do it because that's what you do that time of the year. And so I'm, I would like to, to, uh, to go back to that area of Sonora and see what else I can find out of the customs and the traditions and the mores and the, of, of, of those people because I, I think it will un help me understand myself better and understand my relatives. One thing I have uh, by going on the, on the internet and by my reading, I've, I've, I've learned something very that I always noticed in my family, but I couldn't understand it. Because my mother's side of the family was very Orthodox Catholic, very strict Catholic, no Indian influence whatsoever. But on my mother, on my father's side of the family, I noticed a tremendous amount of tolerance. They were very, very tolerant people. And that has followed through even in modern times in my family, because I have many relatives. And even though the majority of them are, are Catholic, and some of them very, very devout Catholic and deacons in the church and very involved in the Catholic religion, uh, the rest of the family is also religious, but they have branched out into different areas, different creeds. They, I have some relatives who have been Mormon missionaries in Argentina. I have one, one cousin, one who was a, who was a Jehovah's Witness. I have some other cousins right now who are medical missionaries in Russia for an evangelical church and I have uh, some that are that are very active in some of the non-Catholic churches. At the same time the bulk is still very Catholic but there doesn't seem to be any conflict whatsoever. They respect each other tremendously. Uh, I remember one time my, my grandfather told me 
he would not be Opata, he'd be Tarahumara. But uh, the Tarahumaras and the Opatas are actually the same people. Uh, the Opatas are the Tarahumaras that came over on, to the Sonora side of the mountain. But uh, he would, he, one time he told me, we were getting ready for a wedding or something, he said, he said, look son, me, oh, he was talking to me in Spanish, but I'll say it in English. He said, you have to have two barrels, and you fill them full of ice. This one is for the Catholics, and this is for the brothers, or the, or the, the ones that are now um, Protestant or Christian. Because the Catholics like to drink beer, and the hermanos don't drink beer. So you have to have the sodas and the cokes for the hermanos, and you have the cerveza for the Catholics. But tremendous tolerance, and, and, my, my, and my father was extremely tolerant. And he helped wear down some of the intolerant aspects I had in my uh, raising, especially going to a Catholic school for eight years. Uh, I tended to be more, uh, have more attitude towards other religions. And he would always put me, he would not reprimand me, but he would always wear down the sharp edges, the extreme amount of tolerance. And uh, I could tell you stories about my grandparents and how they inter interrelated with people who changed their religions to non-Catholic religions and how many times they were the only ones in the community that stood up for these people because they did face discrimination. So the, a tremendous amount of tolerance. But now studying about the Opatas, I find that even way back, back a thousand years ago, these people were extremely tolerant people. They were, they were, uh, they didn't have any strong they didn't seem to have, I don't know what word to use, they didn't have any strong... Okay, I have to 